Welcome to the Experimental Aircraft Channel. In this episode, we travel back to Airworks in Bruton, Alabama to show you firsthand how an aircraft crankshaft is overhauled. Coming up right now. Welcome back to Airworks. I'm Chris Collum. Um, today we're going to walk you through how we use our AMC crankshaft grinder to process aviation crankshafts. Whether we're doing grinds from 3 thousandths under to 20 thousandths under, we're able to maintain strict tolerances to what the manufacturer tells us we have to do. I'd like to introduce you to Daniel, which he was the one grinding cranks today, and he is going to walk you through the process of how we provide you a quality crankshaft for your engine. After all, it is the backbone of your engine. I'm Daniel. I've been working with Airworks for a little over five years now, and uh, I assemble the majority of the engines here as well as run most of the machines. Shop mascot right here. There he is. That's Truman. You're the watchdog, aren't you? So right now I'm about to grind the main journal on the crankshaft. It's the last one for this crankshaft, and then I'm going to remove it. So uh, I need to take about nine and a half thousandths of an inch off this main journal here. Get your coolant flowing going and your stone turning and then you go ahead and engage. You can start rotation. So what you'll see once the stone engages while I'm grinding. I've already set it up, so what I want to do is come full circle to zero, and that'll be my end point for this time. Now you mentioned you're, you're cutting the radius part of the journal. Yeah, I'm sweeping. So I'm in the stone's engaged in the journal. I'm about five thousand out for my final. So why do they put a radius into a crankshaft journal? Uh, the reason being is any hard corner will give potential for a stress crack. So they put a radius or a fillet into that corner to eliminate the possibility of stress cracks. Let's jump back in. That's the normal sound it makes when you're in the radius, that's what you're listening for. And uh, once you've made a few revolu revolutions while it's making that sound, and you can visually see that the radius is cleaned up, you pull out and you make a final plunge. Okay, so you've met, you've, you've met your target dimension on this now, essentially, by grinding? On the left, I've met my target dimension. On the right, I'm five thousandths away from my target. And that's the point where I'm going to clean up the radius on the right-hand side, like I did on the left-hand side. And after I've done that, I'll plunge in to zero point, which will be 2.2397. I'm removing the crankshaft, so my stocks are locked in position, then you loosen up the two chucks here, and uh, once you do that, you can rotate this crank here to move the tail stock back away from the crankshaft. So that's how you get them in and out. So you gotta hang on to it, and then... Carefully take it out, and then put it on the rack, which is right over here.
change out the stone on the machine. This stone is for doing main journals and I'm going to change to the stone for doing rod journals. So there's several safety guards you got to get out of the way. And then you break the stone loose. It's reverse threaded. Yeah, this is when you thread this on, it pushes the stone all oh, off the you. hub. So I'm clear now. If you are finding value in this video, hit the like button, and it's really important that you subscribe as it helps me get sponsors like Airworks, Aero Adventure. Wing bug and grip lock ties. And right now, grip lock ties has a promo for you to get free shipping. Just enter the code experimental at checkout. Let's jump back in. So, we're gonna set up for doing rods, and that means I need to change the headstock and the tailstock. And uh, it's got a three and a half inch stroke, so we're gonna set them at half that, which is 1.75. So the next step is to change the counterweight position. I just changed the headstock and the tailstock, and I'm going to change the counterweight to the same position. Let's turn the machine on so that I can center my table, and then I'm going to get out the dressing tool and I'm going to dress the stone before I start grinding. Do this each and every time after you use it, you dress it, or after. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, basically, all dressing lasts one crankshaft for us. Okay. I use a feeler gauge to get within three thousandths of the stone. Then I go ahead and turn the stone on so that I can start dressing it. So I'm ready to surface the stone. I've got my tool engaged and I've moved it to a position where it's three thousandths away from the stone. You give a manual turn to the stone to make sure there's no high spots it's going to engage in the tool and then you're ready to turn the stone on and your coolant. So you move both wheels at the same time when you're engaging the stone. You slowly advance your needle forward while keeping a side to side motion on your needle. You get it started going side to side and you start advancing. surfacing the front of the stone. So I'm going to check the radius on the stone to see if I need to regrind the radius or if it's still good because I've just gotten done surfacing the stone and every time you surface the front of the stone you double check your radius. So that's what you do with the stick and then you can check it with the radius gauge. So what you're looking for, you hold it up to the light and you look to see if any light's shining through. You see that sliver of light? It's got a little bit of light. So I am going to go ahead and get the radius grinder and fine tune the radius on the stone. Okay. And I'm all set up. Uh, when you put this tool in, just like the other surfacing tool, you want to place it at about three thousandths uh, of an inch away from the stone. On this one, you measure from the face and from the side. And uh, once you're three thousandths from the front and from the side, you can go ahead and fire up the stone and dress out the radius. Okay. 
good there. So I'll turn on the stone. Turn on my fluid. All you do is rotate the tool back and forth to dress other areas. If you like seeing this type of step-by-step -step detail in these videos, leave me a comment below. Let's jump back in. So I'm just checking one of the journals to see where I'm at on the spring shaft before I mount it. So I'm already in position and my stocks are locked in position. So now I'm ready to put a crankshaft in. You don't want your keyways lining up with the jaw, so you always check orientation before you lock it down. And then once that's locked down, lock down your tail stock. And you're ready. The crankshaft installed, the next point is to establish a center point for grinding a rod journal. So this is called a duck bill and it gives you the general proximity of where your center point's going to be. So you go ahead and slide that into place and lock it on the table. Notice one side touches and this other side does not. So I'm going to loosen the locks on the chucks, rotate crankshaft position without changing the stock position. Correct. You want it seated so that it's touching both sides of the B-block. And that puts you pretty close to where the center point will be. And then you get out the dial indicator to fine tune things. So there's a centering process with the dial indicator and it takes a little bit of time. You make micro adjustments to both the headstock and the tailstock. And then you continually rotate the crankshaft verifying that you get the same reading full circle on the dial indicator in the end. Let's see where I'm at. So I'm 27.5 thousandths of an inch away from the original zero point I established. So I'm going to adjust the machine to compensate for that. So at this point, I'm only four thousandths away from my zero point that I established the second time I made an adjustment. So once you finally tram everything in, you can verify by rotating the crankshaft full circle with your dial indicator in position and it should show you a steady needle full circle. This one stays right on zero. You can see as I'm rotating, the needle is staying right on the zero point, and it measures to the thousandths of an inch, so if there were any variance as you'd see. Yeah, it looks a lot different when you're grinding on rods versus when you're grinding on mains. Sure. So I am good to go, which means it's time to put in my steady rest. I want to position the steady rest just off center because the oil hole's in the center and you want to be just to the side of that. Now I'll tighten up my steady rest. Steady rest stops the crankshaft from flexing. I mean off center from the oil hole. The oil hole, because it's made of neoprene, the little guy, the shoes. It can catch it. It can catch it, yeah. So you want to be just to the side of it. That's about the speed you want, and as you can see, this rod is my center point, and everything else is rotating around that one fixed location. And that's how you grind rods. Oh, oh. You can see that it's 
see the sparks start to shower out of the bottom. Safety glasses are on. <laughs> so this is a crankshaft on V blocks and the nice thing about this is you can check run out and then you can also use your two different micrometers and check the diameter of the journals before and after a grind to make sure that you get the exact dimensions that you're looking for. So you're gonna place this on your center journal Adjust your needle. Once you're in position, you can simply rotate the crankshaft and watch the needle to establish run out. Well, that's just part of the quality control process. So. That's right. This crankshaft only has one thousandth of an inch run out. The book says you're allowed up to seven thousandths, so this is a good crankshaft. All right, Chris, so uh, what do you got going on over here? Looks like you're in the middle of a build here. Yeah, so uh, what we have here, we have what's called a Huff hydraulic dynamometer. Um, this is something that we're in the process of putting in place. Um, we've actually got a portable room coming in tomorrow to get all this set up in. So uh, we're gonna be bringing a uh, engine stand in that's gonna allow us to raise the engine up and down to attach the drive shaft through a counterweight into the hydraulic system. Hydraulic system, we're able to come in and apply hydraulic pressure, um, which is basically gonna allow us to, to calculate what the torque is at a given RPM and what our horsepower rating is on the engines that we produce. Um, all this is gonna be done through a computer system. Um, it's gonna give us our pressure readings, intake manifold pressures, exhaust manifold temperatures, cylinder head temperatures. Uh, it's gonna give us a lot of information to work with to ensure, to continue to ensure that the engines that we produce are making maximum power and make sure our customers are, are always satisfied as they should be. Did you remember to subscribe? Hit the like button. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. I invite you also to go over to Facebook right now and check out the Experimental Aircraft Channel page. Like and follow. And then also I started a group. So if you search for the Experimental Aircraft Channel group, this is for you builders. Uh, I'm inviting you to say it with video and give us a quick daily, weekly walk around of your projects and share it with the rest of the group and it's a way to be encouraged and hopefully maybe give, give you some pressure to keep going on your project and help you also to encourage others to keep working on their projects. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next videos.